uh, Matt Anderson, and uh, this is our first webinar for Learning Glass Solutions. And uh, being the first one, we're going to iron out some kinks as we go, potentially. But uh, I wanted to show you a little bit about what we're doing here with the Learning Glass. We'll show you the, the studio. I'm going to talk at you for about 10 minutes, and then we'll have plenty of time for uh, Q&A. Um, in the room with me, I have uh, Sherry Shopoff and uh, Eric Johnson. And as we go, if you have questions, just chime in on the, on the Q&A. So let's talk a little bit about the glass itself, OK? The first thing that uh, you notice is we're, we do have the ability to do PowerPoint insertion. Most of uh, the people that are out there, most of the Lightboard group has already figured this out. You can do video uh, or PowerPoint insertion really easily with a video switcher, or you can even do it in the computer. And we'll show you the components uh, a little bit later. So, Let's talk a little bit about how it works. The first thing you notice is you don't really see anything in front of me, but if I take a pen and I write, I can make a nice little shape right here on the glass in front of me. And this is really one of the beautiful things about learning glass is this idea that you're not going to see this screen. You're not seeing the whiteboard. You are seeing whatever I am writing. And not only that, you are seeing my facial cues as I write it, okay? So the glass itself is right here in front of me. You can't see it, but you can hear it. It is, of course, uh, low iron uh, shower glass with polished edges. We have LED lighting around the edge that internally lights it. You get special neon markers, and it shows up nice and crisp and visible. And what you'll notice is different colors show up in different intensities. Right, there is orange and here is yellow. But you'll also notice that it's very easy to see. Okay, and what we're, one of the things that we're gonna talk about is lighting. In fact, one of our whole future webinars is all about lighting. How do you get the lighting just right? So the glass itself is just like a board. It's just like writing on it with a dry erase marker. It's very simple. You don't have to write backwards, of course, right? That was one of the points of this whole idea is we didn't want to have to train everybody how to write backwards. And of course, uh, Michael Peshkin and I figured that out pretty quickly that all you have to do is do a horizontal flip of the image. Um, the other sort of key components of the studio we'll talk about in a second, but basically it's the lighting on me. How do you control the illumination of the lecturer in order to get a good image out there? Okay. so. That's how it works. It's just a board. You can walk in with your lecture notes and you can grab a pen and you can deliver your lecture just like you would normally do in any sort of lecture hall. But the advantage is obvious. I don't have to do this. I never have to turn my back to the audience. They can't hear me when I do that. They can't see where I'm looking. So this idea of learning glass is all about facial recognitions, keeping your face right in the picture. All right, what equipment do you need? We're gonna check these off as you go. And this is something that you're familiar with is the old weatherman problem, okay? I don't have this thing right here in front of me. I have it over there on a confidence monitor. And so my lineup for my marks sometimes takes a little bit of practice. You can see my check mark was a little high on that attempt. Now I got the registration just right, okay? So this is how it works. What equipment do you need? Well, first off, you need a learning glass, right? This is the key component. And you can, of course, buy one from us, Learning Glass Solutions, or you can make your own. We put the build instructions right on our website, okay? We want people to adopt this readily and easily. So if you can't afford to buy it from us, and you have the time and you have the skill, you can build your own, all right? It's really not that challenging. We have, of course, made some improvements in our product line as we've uh, been a company. We've been a company now for a little over a year and a half. Uh, but the basic design is all available for you to build your own. Okay, so you need glass, you need LEDs, you need some sort of framing system to hold it up. What's nice about the system that we developed is it also goes up and down. So I can move the entire glass up or down depending on the height of the lecturer, right? That's a lot easier than shrinking the lecturer. So 
you need a table. You need uh, lights for the instructor. You need a camera. And then the most important part is you need some ability to flip that image horizontally. If you want to do this live, you can buy an inline video flipper, or you can find certain cameras that have that flipping feature built into it. If you're just going to record lectures and then post them later, you can do that flip in just about any software that's out there. Even QuickTime Player or something like that has the horizontal flip built into it. It's of course the same as a mirror does. And when we first came up with Learning Glass, we actually used a mirror. So just like looking in your rear view mirror and seeing ambulance behind you, that mirror does that horizontal flipping of the image. So if you're really stuck, just stick a mirror in front of your camera and that will do the horizontal flip for you. That's pretty much the bulk of the equipment that you need. Obviously, if you're going to do stuff like PowerPoint insertion, you need to get a little bit more complicated. You need to get either a video switcher or you need to get a fast computer with the right software to do it. If you want, you could just do that in post, right? You could go to your video uh, editor and do it all in post. Um, anything else that I'm missing about equipment that we might need, Eric or, or Sherry? Yeah, lights, lights and camera. Uh, a lot of universities out there already have lights, already have camera, and so they're really interested in the glass itself, and so that's what we can help you with. Uh, the other thing is a confidence monitor. It's really nice to have a monitor over there so that you can see what you're doing on the screen. You can see where you're going to point with your pen, and you can also get rid of any glare from that monitor using polarization tricks. So if you put a polarizer on your camera, the, uh, the LCD uh, image is already polarized, so if you align the polarizer on your camera just right, you can get rid of that reflection. All right. Audio. audio. Good. So I'm not going to check this off just yet because Sherry pointed out audio. Audio is really important, and as Sherry likes to say, AV, right? Audio comes first. You got to get the audio right. People will tolerate a bad image, but they won't tolerate bad audio. So make sure you get a lapel mic. The lapel mic isolates my voice. It's going to remove a lot of the room sounds. If you have room boom, a lapel mic will really help that. If you have a little bit of ambient noise next door, it will get rid of all that. So get a lapel mic. This is, of course, a wireless lapel mic that is uh, transmitting to the receiver, which is attached to the camera. All right. Good. You can get a lot fancier if you want, depending on your needs. If you're at a university and you really need to do uh, synchronous streaming of the videos, you'll have to look at some more complicated solutions for that. Um, but that's really just adding bells and whistles. The basic approach is glass, lights, camera for recording. Okay, so what can you do with it? Well, obviously, I can lecture to you and I can write stuff on the board, and I can erase. Typically, what I like to do, I'm, I'm a physics professor, but typically how I like to approach my lectures is this. Let's fill up the board, and let's make sure that we save a space for my face, okay? And this is called the rule of thirds, right? You break the screen into thirds. You've got from here over, that's one third. From here over, that's another third. In the center third, I want to keep space available for my face because nobody likes it when I start writing in front of my face. It didn't bother me, but it really bothered my wife, so I had to stop doing that, okay? So don't write in front of your face. Write over here on the left side. Fill in this whole space. And then move over here to the right side and fill in that whole space. And if you time your lecture to fill up a board in about 10 minutes or less, then you can pause, have your audience do something, erase the board, and move on to the next component, okay? So that's one of the things that you can do with it, is you can prepare your online lectures using this approach. It's really easy, it's really simple, and there's just a few little tricks that you need to employ. The other thing that you can do with it, of course, is you can stream, like we're doing right now. You can stream this out to whoever you like, and now you can have a conversation with your audience and say, all right, we were working on this electrical circuit, 
and I'm just a little confused on where the capacitor should go. Should I put the capacitor in front of the resistor or should I put the capacitor behind the resistor? Turns it out in a simple circle like this, it doesn't really matter. But if you wanted to get to a more complicated diagram, then you can explain everything right in front of you with pen, it's really nice. Okay, so these are all fun things that you can do with it. You can of course communicate with your employees. If you're uh, doing some training of your employees, you can have a PowerPoint right here. You can annotate it as you go and you can pipe it out to all your employees. All right, so that's what you can do with it. See, my registration got off again. I need to recalibrate myself. There we go. Okay, again, if you have questions as we go, chime in on the Q&A or just send a text to Sherry. All right, so the nice thing about this setup is I can annotate stuff. So here's a picture of something. I don't know what this is. What is this, Eric? It's some sort of purple, pink stuff. It's, a, it's like a cotton candy thing or something. Okay, so these are, of course, electrons that are orbiting the nucleus. And in the nucleus, you have protons and you have neutrons and they're all bound together by the strong nuclear force and they're bouncing around. And then you have these electrons that are swirling all around. Now, this is sort of a classical picture of what this looks like. We know that electrons are not really little billiard balls that are moving around. They are actually these electron clouds. And so that electron is occupying much more than this little space, it's occupying this cloud. Electrons can be in two places at the same time. It's kind of cool, all right? So this is fun, right? Physics in action right there. The other thing that I mentioned is we're doing Learning Glass live in the classroom. So I am a, a professor at San Diego State. I teach uh, physics and I bring in my uh, LGS 30. This is our 30 inch version of the glass into the large auditorium classroom. And in the picture there, you see the LGS 30, there's the camera. And this is one of my students behind the glass demonstrating a homework problem. We do this every Friday. And this girl, when she came up, she said, I'm so nervous. And she was shaking, but as soon as she sat down and started working on it with the pen, her nerves calmed down and she just, okay, I can do this. And she went through the problem. It's really fun, and here's a, here's a view from the backside of what it looks like. So there's the glass, there's two LED tower lights that are illuminating her, and then you can see the, the camera on the other side. So this is kind of fun because in this class, and this is a 500 seat auditorium classroom, this is the view from the back of the room. We have these giant projectors, the outside projectors have the image of the learning glass, the center is a particular homework problem that she is demonstrating. And if you look closely, you can see everything she's writing. You can see her face. You can, of course, hear her. She's wearing a lapel mic in that room and broadcasting to the speakers. It's just crystal clear, okay? And the students absolutely love it. If you haven't tried this, you, you gotta try it. The students wake up like you would not believe once one of their peers is up there demonstrating how to do these physics problems. It's really fun. Okay, uh, we are getting close to uh, walking around the studio, but uh, I wanted to alert you to uh, future webinars that we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about AV, how do you do the lighting? Lighting turns out to be one of the, the key issues here. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about instructor presence. How do you arrange your lecture to really engage with your audience? And then we'll also talk about digital images. How do you insert them? What kind of options do you have? for digital insertion, for frosted glass insertion, and so forth. So why don't we hit the lights, we'll show them the studio, and, uh, and then we're gonna take some Q&A. So Eric's gonna switch to the other camera, and this is our studio. Here, why don't you say hi to Sherry there. There's Sherry, and uh, Eric's behind, turn around to him. That's, that's Eric. Yeah. <laughs> so this is our studio. Okay, it's a room that is, this particular room is about 12 feet wide and about 18 feet deep. Uh, you need a room that is reasonable size. It doesn't have to be gigantic. As you can see, this is the glass on the electric lift table. And it spans about 
five feet of glass, but then the lighting and so forth comes out about eight feet. One, uh, one of the nice options for lighting that we discovered is, are these ceiling hanging mounts. Okay, so if you have a false drop ceiling in your setup, you can hang these lights from the mounts. And then the lighting scheme is pretty standard. One on the left, one on the right, one center, and then one hair light to really highlight your bald spot, which is awesome. So love that. Um, this is the electric lift table. Like we said, goes up and down. We've got an anti-fatigue mat here on the ground. Uh, markers, pens, proprietary uh, squeegee. This, this is the best rubber out there, trust me. Um, and then let's move over to that side and we'll show you some of the stuff over here. So this is the camera setup right there. Um, as you can see, we have the confidence monitor directly behind the camera. And this is kind of cool. We get the infinity there. Help. Camera sits right next to the confidence monitor and that allows you to keep eye contact. You've got to remember that you're always going to look back at the camera. You can't forget that your students or whoever you're talking to is in the camera right there. They're not somewhere else in the room. Over here, we have our computer system uh, where we're doing all the digital video insertion. Uh, we are, we've been using two different types of software. One of them is called OBS, which is open broadcasting software, which is shareware and is wonderful. And another one that we've had good luck with is Wirecast, which is a, uh, a software that you have to purchase, but is also very good. And so we can do all the digital video insertion here. You can record everything right here on the computer and then you have it in digital format ready to go. So that's pretty much our studio. We are located in San Diego, California. Uh, we are actually renting out this studio to people that don't wanna build their own, don't have time to, to make their own, don't have money to buy one. They just wanna come by and rent the studio for a few hours. We are actually doing that here. So why don't we turn it over to Sherry and she's going to see if we have any questions. Do we have any questions coming in? Um, I don't seem to have any questions unless I'm not seeing it. Okay. So why don't you guys pipe in? Uh, I got feedback here. Why don't you pipe in questions right now? Sherry's going to sort through it and, and figure out. Uh, okay. So Matt, we got. Um, how do you get you want to switch to the other camera, Eric? Oh, yeah, I can. There we are. Uh, we have, in addition to the filter, what uh, with the confidence monitors, do you have to dim the brightness of contrast? Okay, so the question was about the polarizer on the camera and the uh, dimming of the confidence monitor. So the, the polarizer on the camera does a good job of getting rid of most of the glare, but not all of the glare. And the reason is actually rather subtle. It's because the tempered glass actually causes a polarization rotation as it goes through from the front to the back. And so when it comes back out, it is actually slightly different polarization in certain components of the glass. And so if you ever see like vertical stripes in your glass, that is from the tempering. That tempering creates something called birefringence in the glass. So the polarizer does a good job of getting rid of the original glare from the backside, but anything that went through the glass and came back is not perfectly extinguished. And so you do have to dim the confidence monitor. So our confidence monitor is quite a bit dim and we've turned the contrast down quite a bit in order to get rid of any glare. But it's on right now, and I don't think you can see any reflection of it right now in the, uh, in the image. Okay, good question. Uh, who, who is that question from? Did uh, it's it? from Dan uh, Vasquez. 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 Dan Zatko, all right, that was from Dan Zatko. Dan, you get a smiley face for today. <laughs> teleprompters, yeah. So teleprompters, uh, same idea. Uh, you can actually use the confidence monitor as your teleprompter. And if it is close to the camera level, then the eye contact will be the same. So for instance, right now, I am looking directly at the confidence monitor, and now I'm looking at the camera lens. 
right? It's just that little bit of subtlety. Of course, a real teleprompter, you can put that in front of your camera with the hood and the whole deal, and then the, the line of sight will be right to the lens. But again, you have to worry about the glare of the teleprompter on this glass, okay? The problem is when you normally do a teleprompter, there's nothing in between the teleprompter screen and the lecturer. But now we've put a big piece of glass in between it, and so there's a little bit of glare coming back. And so playing around with the polarization will help you eliminate that problem. Good question. Uh, we've got a lot of Thank you, Dan. About um, the software that we're using. Okay, a lot of questions about the software that we're using. Uh, so we are currently using uh, Wirecast right now. Wirecast. We've used Wirecast, and we've also used OBS. They're they're pretty comparable systems. Um, the PowerPoint is done in PowerPoint with a green, coma, a green chroma key background, okay? And then you just have to insert that into OBS or Wirecast as one of your sources. So in OBS, you'll have like camera number one, camera number two, and then you can have a document source and you can pipe in the PowerPoint into that third picture. Okay, and that's sort of nice because then it allows you to, in fact, control the slides with a remote um, keyboard. All right, so we'll, we'll probably have a whole other webinar about the software end of things. Um, it's not impossible, but it is a little bit tricky. Uh, cleaning the glass and what we use to clean it. Okay, cleaning the glass. So uh, as you saw just a minute ago, when I write normally, on the glass and I erase it, it takes a little bit of elbow grease. It's not too bad. You probably don't see any smudge on the glass right now. I can see a little bit of smudge on the glass right now. And this will just build up over time. And typically after about a week of use, you want to squeegee off the glass. So let me show you what uh, we use for that. So we have a um, foaming glass cleaner. You can get this at Home Depot. This happens to be Zep, but any of the foaming glass cleaners is what you need. Don't use just regular Windex. It dries too quickly. You need something that's really gonna dig in and, and hang on to liquid for a while. Foaming glass cleaner and a squeegee, okay? And you just spray the whole thing and you let it soak for about 30 seconds and then you squeegee it off. And when you squeegee it off, all of that pen marking goes to the edge and you might want to take a rag and just collect some of the drips as they come down off the edge okay um, it's not hard to do but sometimes you have to do it maybe twice because you do have a lot of pen build up on the glass and since we're trying to keep it transparent it's important to keep it clean eric can you take off that last powerpoint uh, slide and let's uh move to the next question Yeah. Okay, so a question about the uh, flipping of the image. So certain cameras will have it built in. Very few, it turns out, have it built in, but some cameras will have it built in. But more commonly, you're going to have to buy an inline video flipper. And this is a little electronic box. It's about this big. And it's usually called a, uh, a scaler. And a scaler has HDMI in and HDMI out. And then there are some commands that you can tell the little box what to do. And typically it's a push button menu that will show up on the HDMI out on the monitor screen. Okay, do you wanna change the brightness? Do you wanna change the scaling? You know, scale it up, scale it down. Do you want to do a horizontal flip of the image? Okay, so there's video scalers that do that flipping in line in basically real time with very minimal delay. Okay, other questions? Yeah, we have a question about the built-in LEDs in the glass. Mm -hmm. All right, so the, the LEDs in our glass are built in, right? They come with the unit. When we sell you a unit, it comes with the frame, with the mounting legs, with the electrical cords, everything you need to do 
all you have to do is bolt it onto the table, the electric lift table. Okay, so the LEDs are built into the edge. In our biggest um, size, the LGS60, they're also removable. So if you did have uh, an LED that burned out, which we've never had, but you know, it might happen, uh, you can take off the whole frame and just replace that LED strip. And these are the typical sort of LED uh, ribbons that uh, Michael Peshkin talks about in his build instructions that I talk about in my build instructions. You just want good high power LED strips. And then also you want a dimmer. It's important to have a dimmer on your glass. And if you look on our website, there's a, a question about uh, the glass getting dirty and should I really worry about that much? You don't have to worry about it that much as long as you realize that the image might not look bad even though the glass looks smudgy to your eye. So take a look at that. It's on our, it's on our website. It's, I think it's the first, the top one on our facts page on the website. All right, other questions? Uh, I have another one about uh, quality control, resolution, quality versus file size, what frame rate to use. Okay, so he's asking about uh, quality control. Who, who is that question from? Uh, this is again from Dan. Okay, so Dan's asking about uh, quality control. Uh, pretty much Sherry always approves my performance or disapproves of my performance. That's how we do it. Uh, that's our quality control. Um, we always go 30 frames per second. You could do 60, but it's a little bit overkill. Uh, 30 frames per second seems to be adequate. We almost always try to go 1080p, okay? Um, which is also plenty of resolution for any sort of you know, website application, right? You can get away with 720 or in some cases even 480, but I would say go 1080p. Basically, that is the standard nowadays. Um, there are some people, including us, that have also played around with 4K. And 4K is going to be the standard eventually, but Right now, it's still very bandwidth intensive and it's also data intensive. You have to have a lot of storage for a 4K. 4K is nice because you can zoom in on different parts of your lecture and keep 1080p resolution. So if I was doing something very intricate right here and you wanted to zoom in on that, you can keep that in HD resolution if you have the whole thing in 4K. I personally don't think it's worth it just yet. I would say go for 1080p. Uh, we have, what are the best practices around distance between the background of the presenter and the glass? What are the best practices for the distance between the presenter and the glass? And the background. Okay, so basically uh, it is arm's length to the glass and it is arm's length to the background, okay? So this is about two feet, two and a half feet. This is about two feet, two and a half feet, all right? There's a black background here that you can't really see. This is uh, why we put uh, the electric lift table centered, the glass is centered on the electric lift table because it's just about the right arm distance, gives you a little shelf space right here where you can keep your laptop, you can keep your keyboard and the pens, right about arm's distance. It's not hard to figure this out because if you just stand in front of a whiteboard, when you write on a whiteboard, how close are you? You're just about arm's distance, maybe a little bit less. Okay, how do you get the writing so bright. Okay, how do you get the writing so bright? So the key is really in the right pens. One, it's having bright LEDs inside the glass, which we do here, but two, it's really getting the right pens. You need the fluorescent dry erase, and it's because they have fluorescing material in there, like the yellow has fluorescine in it, and that really fluoresces very brightly. If you do a regular pen, for instance, this is a regular black dry erase marker. And if I write, so you can see it right in front of my face, it doesn't light up at all, okay? It doesn't have any of that fluorescence in it. If the lights are too bright, then you're gonna start to lose the colors, okay? So if you crank up the LEDs all the way and you start to see on the camera, oh, my green and my red and my orange, they're all looking the same color, all that means is you're saturating your CCD array, you're giving too much light to the camera. And so your options are turn down the glass or turn down the aperture on the camera. 
Good. Uh, we're getting close to ending time, so maybe a couple more questions. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on having two people behind the uh, class? Who said that? Uh, Owen Guthrie. Okay. Owen Guthrie says, "What are your thoughts on having two people behind the glass?" I love it. I love it, and we've done it a lot, and it's largely because you know this idea of peer instruction is becoming more and more important. Right? It's not about the professor teaching the student, it's about the student teaching the student. And if you have a 60 inch glass like we have here, there's plenty of room for somebody else. I can stand here and they can stand there and we can talk to each other and we can work out this problem together. And this idea of peer instruction is really critical. So I've done a lot of this with my classes. Uh, I've even had my uh, K through 12 daughters working together on the glass with a third math instructor showing them a very classic uh, math problem. And it's really wonderful. It's a great way to just see directly into the minds of these kids and watch them interact with each other. So I, I highly recommend trying to get more than one person on the glass at a time. It's a, it's a, great, a great thing to try out. Uh, last question. Last question. Different color backdrops. Uh, yeah, different color backdrops. So uh, we typically use black, but we have done different color backdrops uh, even in this studio. Um, it just depends on what you're really trying to accomplish with the writing. Make sure that the writing is visible on whatever backdrop. The lighter the backdrop you use, the harder it's going to be to see the writing. So a black backdrop is great, but it also just sort of disappears. Maybe you want a dark gray or a dark royal blue. We've tried some patterns. We've even done green screen back here, right? We've put chroma key green screen, and then we keyed out the whole thing, and now you don't have to lecture in the studio. You can lecture from the beach or from the moon or from wherever you like. So there's lots of different options there for the for the backdrop, but just remember, the whole point of this is to get your message across. You want to be able to convey your message easily and clearly, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. All right, I think we should wrap it up for today. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, uh, just email us, uh, contact Sherry, and uh, we'd be happy to, to uh, answer your questions. Uh, we're going to try to make this whole webinar available as soon as it's uh, available on our website. So look for that. And uh, we'll be back uh, next month with another webinar. And then in April, we're going to launch uh, a whole new website and some new products. So stay tuned. Thank you. <laughs>